So today I have the honor to work on Dr. James Bond's website called dyskin.com.au and he has kindly allowed me to optimize his website for Google PageSpeed Insights and share the results on this video. So Dr. James, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for allowing me to share this video on my channel. And if any of you watching this video have skin problems and you live in New South Wales in Australia, do check out Dr. James' site and contact him. Anyway, just to give you a little context, Dr. James' website is built with Elementor and it is hosted on SiteGround and the only optimization tool he used is the SG Optimizer by SiteGround. And if you have been following my channel, you know that I am not a fan of Elementor or any old school page builders because they are usually the main cause of site speed problems. I'm not just claiming this based on what others say, I speak with my years of experience using page builders and it was such a headache trying to optimize a page built with page builders. I even spent thousands of dollars hiring a web developer to optimize a site but the best score I could get on Google PageSpeed Insights was hanging around 80 to 85. I've never hit the 90 mark with old school page builders. And over the years, I see how Gutenberg has evolved and being a PageSpeed junkie, I knew Gutenberg was the key to a good PageSpeed score and that's why I focused so much on it. I have even created quite a few tutorials to help you out if you're interested in switching to Gutenberg. You can check out the playlist right here. Anyway, the page we are going to optimize today has a PageSpeed rating of 23 and I want to show you how I I managed to optimize this Elementor page to reach a score of 75 without using any third-party caching plugins other than the SG Optimizer. Just by understanding the lab data from Google PageSpeed Insights, you can tweak your page to get a much better score. And I will show you as well how I recreated an identical page with Gutenberg and with all the functions intact that fetches a 90 plus rating. I'm pretty sure after watching this video, you have great insights on how to optimize whatever page you're on. My only goal is to help you save thousands of dollars from hiring a web developer in case you are a page speed junkie like me. So I hope you will enjoy this video as much as I like creating this and I hope you can smash that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. If you have done that, thank you. Now let's check out what's behind Dr. James' side. Let's go. So we are on a WordPress dashboard of dyskin.com.au and let's check out how it looks like right now. So this is the main page of the website and if we look around, actually it seems like this homepage is very simple. It doesn't have much functionality that could slow down a website. And what would seems to be most useful is this book now button. When you click on it, if you're on a phone, it should allow you to contact dyskin.com.au directly. So let's first check out how this page is performing on Google PageSpeed Insights. So this page is not performing at its best. This is on a mobile performance. The desktop performance looks like this. It is still not that bad, but what's most important is mobile. Because nowadays, most of us are on mobile and Google is putting a lot more focus on mobile right now. So let's first talk about the lab data and what these entails before we get into the details. So the first contentful pane is basically the first object that loads on the mobile screen of the website whenever it is requested on the web browser. For example, if you type in the dyskin.com.au, the first contentful pane is basically the first object that loads on your screen. And for this case, the first object that loads on the screen takes about 3.1 seconds and is basically on the orange zone. And to get to the green zone of this is basically one second or less. The time to interactive is the delay between the start of the page load and the time the user can actually do anything on a page, for example, scrolling or clicking on the button. And then the speed index is the time it takes to load all the elements above the fold, which means this. Above the fold means whatever content or element that is supposed to load on the screen. The total blocking time measures the amount of time it takes between the first contentful pane and the time to interactive where in between there is a lag time where the server is performing some long tasks. The blocking time will usually occur when a web page is executing some JavaScripts. So the more JavaScript heavy a page is, this will increase the blocking time, hence increasing the time to interactive as well. The largest contentful pane measures when the largest content elements such as the largest image or the text blocks become visible. So if you have an image that is very large in size, you will get a very poor result on this metric. And finally, the cumulative layout shift is something like this. There is an unexpected shift in your content and it annoys the user. In this example, the user just ordered 56 items unintentionally. The lower the number, the better it is. So now that we understand the metrics, let's go into the opportunities for this page. 
So there is this remove unused CSS. So if you look at these, Dr. James is using the SiteGround Optimizer to combine both the CSS and the JavaScripts. So if we go to the WordPress dashboard and we go to the SG Optimizer, and we go to the front end optimization. As you can see over here, this combined JavaScript files and combined CSS files are both turned on. So if we turn these off, we should be able to see what JavaScripts or CSS files that are unused. So let's do that. And then let's head back to the Google PageSpeed Insights. Let's copy this and open up a new tab. And let's run this test again. Now let's check this out. And if we compare the results, this remove unused CSS, they are basically all these over here. And if you take a look at the difference here, this remove unused CSS is 0.6 seconds. And over at the previous test, it is 1.2 seconds. And if you take a look at this, if we combine all the CSS files, the total file size is 113.4. And if we split it open, if you combine these and these together, the total size is not even close to 113.4. So in this case, combining the CSS files is not basically doing justice for this page. It is not well optimized in this case. But if we look into the JavaScripts and compare both, when we do not combine the JavaScripts, the potential savings is 1.2 seconds. Over at the previous test, the savings is 1.2 seconds as well. And the thing over here is that you see this recapture where the transfer size is 131.1. This is basically the norm over here as well, 131.1. And let's go back to the previous test. The jQuery is 33 kilobytes. And if we go back here, the jQuery is 33 kilobytes as well. And what is combined here is basically this, the Swiper JavaScript, which you can see over at the previous test. This is combined using the SiteGround Optimizer, which in this case is not well optimized as well. So this is just one method for you to see if a speed optimization plugin is useful or not in a certain aspect. You just need to toggle something off and compare the past and present result. And you basically see what is well optimized or not. So in this case, combining the JavaScript and CSS is not ideal. So now let's look at the biggest issue here, which is this eliminate render blocking resources. So the biggest potential saving here is this HT Mega widgets, which is the CSS loaded from one of the plugins, which is this HT Mega, absolute add-ons for Elementor page builder, which you can actually do a lot of things on this. Like for example, these are all the elements that it has that will give an Elementor page a boost as it adds all these elements to the page builder. And honestly, I don't see a lot of these elements used on the page. And toggling all this on basically loads a lot more CSS than what it needs to. And in case some of you who are not familiar with my channel, I do not support any of these old school page builders like Elementor, DV Builder, Thrive Architect, and all of this because they are loading a lot of unused CSS and JavaScripts just for a simple page. And honestly, most of these features over here Gutenberg has this as well. And the good thing about Gutenberg is that only when an element is used, then they'll be loaded on the page. Otherwise, they will not load any unnecessary CSS or JavaScripts. And I will prove it to you in just a while when I recreate this page using Gutenberg. But to make this fair, right, what I see on this page, there are quite a few elements on this page, which I think if we remove this, it will make this elemental page load faster. Like for example, this map function over here. The thing here is whenever you're trying to optimize a page speed, the lesser it is, the better it is, which means the lesser function you have, the better for the page load. So there is really a balance between the functionality and the page speed, which is more important to you. You have to decide before you do any page speed optimization. Because because somehow or rather you need to sacrifice one or the other. So one of the things that cause the page to slow down is whenever a web page is drawing data from a third party or from its own server. Like for example, this. This page is basically drawing the data from Google Maps and this will cause the site to slow down. And if we remove this, it should improve the page speed drastically. Secondly, if you scroll down further, you can see this as well. It is drawing information from this sunsmart.com. And if we remove this, it will make the site run faster as well and followed by this. This is drawing information from Instagram. And if we remove this as well, this page will run much faster. So the next thing is I don't think this recapture is necessary unless you are capturing data input from your users, which in this case, it is not. So this is an unnecessary function that we can remove to improve the page speed. So let's just do all this.
Let's remove this and replace it with an image. Let's remove this as well, as well as the Instagram feed, plus this recapture and let's do the test again. And my prediction is that this PHP Insight score will go up to 60 to 70s right after we remove all these elements. So let's edit this page on Elementor. Let's scroll down all the way to Google Maps. Let's remove this. So these are footer widgets which we cannot remove from this Elementor page. We gotta remove it from the team customizer. So if we go to the page and go to customize, and if we scroll down all the way to this widget area, let's click on this edit widget. And you can basically see that these two are widgets here that we need to remove. So let's do just that. Let's remove this as well as this. And let's publish this. Let's check out the page. And here we go. We have removed most of these items that will slow down the page. And lastly, we have this recapture here, which we shouldn't have on this page itself. And because we are not using any contact form on this page, let us just deactivate this contact form plugin for a while because this is what adds this recapture. So if we deactivate this for a while and let's refresh this, this recapture should be gone. Okay, so all the elements that supposedly cause a web page to slow down are gone. Let's do the test again. Let's open up a new Google PageSpeed Insights, copy the URL, and let's do the test. And as you can see, it is quite a big jump from the previous setup. The rating has almost doubled. And if we remove this issue, reduce initial server response time to match the previous over here, which is 0.73 seconds, the rating should go up much more because that is not really an indicator of how well a page is loading. So if we look at this, the reduced initial server response time is 0.63 seconds and the previous test is 0.73, so it's very close to each other. And just take a look at this rating when we have removed all the elements that supposedly caused the website to slow down. Now, if we compare the lab data over here to the previous result, we can see that after removing all those elements, the total blocking time has reduced from 1000 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds and it is in the green zone from the red zone. And the time to interactive has reduced from 11.7 seconds to 5.2 seconds, which is quite a good improvement. And the biggest problem right now is this preload largest contentful pane image, which is this over here. And if we look at the home page, it is this big background image loading at the back. Now for any websites, I recommend not to have a background image that is very big in size. And one more is that this background image is loading above the fold. If we push this image below the fold on a mobile screen, it might load much faster. So if you look at what is loaded over here, as you can see, the background image did not add any design value. And you're much better off with a white background because it's not doing you any good on a page speed score. So if we go to the Elementor page and remove this background image, let's update this and let's do a speed test again. And as you can see, the largest contentful pane has reduced to 4.7 seconds from 5.4 seconds. And before that, the largest contentful pane was this large background image. And now the largest contentful pane is this image over here. But this is still not ideal. Let us try to push this image down and let's push all this element down as well so that the largest contentful pane may be this text or the button. And by doing so, we should improve the largest contentful pane score. So let's go to the Elementor page. Let's edit this column and let's change this to the mobile version. Let's edit this and add a top padding of 50. And let's add some padding of maybe 50 as well. And for the call now button, let's add maybe a 20. This is a bit much, so let's do this maybe 20. And for the image, let's push this down a lot. And we shouldn't see the image above the fold. So let's update this. On the desktop version, it still looks the same. So now let's open up another Google PageSpeed Insights. And let's test this again. Now we still can see the image over here, but let's check out what is the largest contentful pane now. So the largest contentful pane now is this header over here, which is what we wanted. And now it takes only three seconds to load down from 4.7 seconds. Can you see the difference over here? This little change over here actually boosted the rating by seven points. 
And let's take a look at the initial server response time to see if it's a good match. So this is 1.27 seconds. Previously, it was 1.34, which is closely even. Now let's try to make this reduce server initial response time to match this 0.3 seconds when we have the background image over here. So now we have the reduced initial server response time at 0.55 seconds and on this page where we have the background image, the reduced initial server response time is 0.63 seconds, which is very close. And from here, we did two important adjustments, which is to remove the background image and to shift this image down so that it would not appear above the fold and be included as the largest contentful paint. And because of these two small adjustments, our rating jumped from 66 all the way to 75. So you see, once you understand what this lab data entails, you can basically optimize the page fully. But from what I see over here, this is the best that we can optimize without using any third-party optimization plugins. Currently, this page only uses the SG optimization plugin, which is not the best plugin, but it helps at least a little. Now from here, I want to show you the difference between an Elementor page and a Gutenberg page. I'll be recreating this page from scratch using Gutenberg, and we're going to run the Google PageSpeed Insights test. And you you will know why I said Elementor is slowing down your website. So let's go. So now we have an almost identical page created with Gutenberg blogs. And if we click on the button, if you're on mobile, it will prompt you to choose the application to make the call. And as for the page on Gutenberg, if I click on this button, it will prompt the same thing. So with two almost identical page, now let's test it on Google PageSpeed Insights. This is the score we had for the page created with Elementor. Let's open up a new tab and copy the URL for this page built with Gutenberg. And let's do the test. So now let's check out the reduced initial server response time to see if they are comparable. So as you can see here, for the Elementor page, it is 0.55 seconds and on the Gutenberg page, it's 0.59 seconds. So I would say that this test is quite fair. And just take a look at the rating. With an almost identical page, we can achieve a 90 plus rating with just the Gutenberg blocks. And for some reason, the page builders are loading a lot more CSS and JavaScripts on the backend that reduces the page speed potential. And honestly, whatever you can create on Elementor, you can create that on Gutenberg as well. I hear a lot of Elementor users saying they would never switch to Gutenberg because it does not have the functions Elementor provides. But honestly, after using Gutenberg for a very long time, I can say that Gutenberg can almost replace Elementor. Right now, it's almost 80 to 90% already. And in the next couple of months or a year, I'm pretty sure Gutenberg will match up to all the features that Elementor provides. And honestly, if you look at this, this eliminate render blocking resources, this HT Mega widgets, Font Awesome, all these are part of this plugin over here, which is not required if you don't use Elementor anymore. So if you want to go full on using Gutenberg, you can expect that the page speed score is going to be much better than this once you have completely removed Elementor and the corresponding add-ons. And this remove unused CSS as well. This is from the HT Mega widgets. And over here, you can see that there are a lot more HT Mega widgets, which we never use on a page, but it is still loading because the plugin is still active. So honestly, if you really want to optimize your page speed score, you should seriously consider Gutenberg. But if you really love page builders and you will never use Gutenberg, then an alternative would be Bricks Builder or Oxygen Builder. These are new school page builders that will put you in advantage for page speed. I don't put out this advice lightly. I've done extensive tests on all page builders versus Gutenberg, and I openly share what I've done to derive the final results. At the top, you will see Gutenberg versus old school page builders such as Elementor, Beaver Builder, Thrive, Teamify, Cprod, and etc. And at the bottom, you will see Gutenberg versus new school page builders such as Bricks, Oxygen, and Live Canvas. So I hope this video did provide you with some good insights on how to optimize your page for Google PageSpeed Insights.